Good morning, everybody. I'd like to wish everyone a great week. This is a Devar Torah brought to you from TorahAnytime.com from Magen David Synagogue in Los Angeles. This week's parasha, Beha'alotecha, the beginning of the parasha speaks about God commanding Moshe Rabbeinu to light the menorah. The menorah is the central, one of the central kelim, vessels in the Beit HaMikdash. The menorah represented the Torah. The menorah had seven branches on it. It was one of the most beautiful, beautiful vessels that, they, that the Jewish people had in the Beit HaMikdash, the temple. And the words say as follows. God commanded Moshe to tell Aaron to light and to kindle the menorah in a certain fashion. And the Pasuk says, I'm quoting you word for word, Vayas ken Aaron, and Aaron did so. Says Rashi, the commentator on the, on the Torah, what does it mean, Aaron did so? Of course Aaron did so. What's the question? Why does the Torah need to tell me that Aaron did so? And Rashi answers, to praise Aaron, to teach us that he never changed in the format or his, the way of lighting the menorah from the way God commanded him to do it. And the question all our sages ask here is, what is the big deal? Aaron, all his life, lit and kindled the menorah, kindled the candelabra of the Beit HaMikdash of the temple. He did it every single day without changing. He did it the way God commanded him to do. Of course, here we're talking about Aaron HaKohen, the brother of Moshe Rabbeinu. How else is he going to light and kindle the menorah? Why should he change it? If God commands him to do it in a certain fashion, of course he's going to do it. That's a praise for Aaron. Maybe you could say that's a praise for somebody you know who just came into the fold, came into religion. Okay, but for Aaron Kohen, we're praising him for not changing. And uh, there's a few answers our sage has given. I would like to share with you today one or two of those answers because each one is a lesson for us in life. And the first answer they give is the praise that Aaron didn't change. We're not talking about he didn't change for the worse. When he came to light the menorah, he didn't degrade himself and do it in a way that's worse than he was supposed to do it. Of course, in that way he didn't change. But the novel is he didn't change even for the better. What does that mean, ladies and gentlemen? You know, when you're told to do a job, to do a task, you come to do it the first way and you're told from your boss how to do it. You can imagine the first, here we're talking about, I didn't mention, Aaron Akoyan didn't did it for 40 years without changing. So the first year you do your job, okay. Then after the second year, the technology is better, things are getting better. You say to you, you know, my boss told me to do it this way, but if I do it another way, I will enhance the lighting and the kindling of the menorah. I will enhance the job in a better way. My friends, for 40 years, Aaron Kohen did the job the way God told him, without changing even for the better. How many times every morning Aaron Kohen must have said to himself, you know, God told me to write, light it this way, in this fashion. But if I would lit it a different way, I'm sure it's even a mitzvah. It's better. It, the flame will be nicer. It would be done more professionally. Aaron Kohen said, I'm going to do it every single way every single day, the way God told me to. And this is a lesson for us in life, that the Torah, we're supposed to fit the Torah, we're supposed to fit ourselves in the Torah, not the Torah to be fitting into us. The Torah is 3,000 years old, and it's relevant today without changing. Not only is it relevant today, but it's relevant to the future, to the future generations as well, ladies and gentlemen. So that's the first message that comes up from lighting the menorah that we have to know. Not to change, the Torah, the menorah represents the Torah, and the Torah doesn't change. And Aaron Akwen didn't change the way he kindled the menorah. And number two is, what was the praise about Aaron that he didn't change in the way he kindled the menorah is his enthusiasm in lighting it. For 40 years he's lighting and kindling the candelabra. The first day he comes over there, wow, what a job, so beautiful, this is... The menorah that represents the Torah. That's such a nice thing to do. You can imagine the excitement in the first day he's doing his job. Day two, year two, year three, for 40 years. Just the same way he was enthusiastic about it. He was excited about it the first day. My friends, 
that enthusiasm lasted for all 40 years in the desert when he lit the candelabra, when he lit the menorah. And that's an amazing message for us today in our life. Take the best example I could give is a bar mitzvah kid who puts on tefillin. So the first day he puts on tefillin, you can imagine the video camera's there, his parents are there, his family's there. It's so exciting. You even get a breakfast afterwards. Everybody comes to, you know, to have a good time. What happens three, four years later? So you come, you put on the fill in, you just wrap it up. The excitement has to be burning like the candelabra when we come to do mitzvot. It has to last like the first day we do it. You know, a story I can think of which can illustrate this in such a good way is in the 1920s, here in America, when at that time, if you didn't work on a Saturday on the Shabbat, you know, it was a very, very, very big temptation. The bus told you, don't come back to work on Monday. And literally, you didn't have money and bread to give to your kids. This was a very, very big test. And many, many people failed, but some people passed. There were two families who lived next to each other on the same block. And they were Orthodox Jews. And every time they got fired from work, they came and they continued to keep Shabbat. And Baruch Hashem, they passed the test. They never desecrated the Shabbat. But one family, his children, went off the derech, off the fold, threw away the towel, didn't keep orthodoxy. And the other family, his children, were beautiful kids, continued the tradition with love and with joy. So one of the parents went to Ramosha Feinstein, who was very close to at the time. And he said, I don't understand. My neighbor is living on the same street as me. We went through the same difficulties in life. My kids went to the same Jewish school. What did I do wrong? Where did I go wrong that my neighbor went right? That his kids are all orthodox, continuing the fold, continuing the tradition, loving Torah with enthusiasm. How comes we went to the same shul, my kids were educated in the same school, where did I go wrong? And Moshe said to him, when you got fired from your job because you stood up to the test, your neighbor also did, you did the right thing. You passed your test. But when you came home, how did you come home? And he says, what do you mean? I, Rebbe, I got fired. I was miserable. I came home and I sat down on the couch and I told my wife and my kids heard me saying the message, it is so hard to be an Orthodox Jew. It's so hard to be an observant Jew. Her Moshe said, you know how your neighbor came home every time? He came home and he got fired. And he took his kids and he said to his kids, let's dance. So his kids said, why? He said, I got fired. He goes, daddy, but you got fired. He goes, don't you understand? I got fired because I'm not going to work on Shabbat. Because I'm not going to give my Shabbat away the most best day in the world. I am so happy. I am so excited for this. It's so beautiful to keep the Shabbat. The Shabbat is worth more than anything else. And Rav Moshe told him, you gave your kids the wrong message. Your kids heard from you every time. It's hard to be a Jew. So they said, it's hard to be a Jew. What do I need this for? It's all in perspective the way we look at things. Ladies and gentlemen, the menorah, the candelabra, Aharon Cohen never changed his enthusiasm. For 40 years, he came and he struck and he lit and he kindled that candelabra with such an enthusiasm. There's another, another story of a nursery kids who the Mora says to the nursery kids, okay, Chaim, you're the Abba of Shabbat. Sit down. So he makes the Kiddush. You know, in nursery they pretend to be the Abba and the Mommy. The Mommy lights the candles, the Father makes the Kiddush. So he sits down after he makes the Kiddush. And he sits down like this and he goes, Ah, oh, what a hard week I had this week. Ah, oh, Baruch Hashem. So the nursery, the Mora says, Where does that line come from? He goes, What do you mean? My father does this. I should be like my father. My father, every time he gets the challenge on Shabbat, he gets the Chamin. The way he sits down and he crouches and he goes, Ah, oh, what a hard week it is. Guys, kids pick up everything they see from their parents. There's one more message that there's seven branches, and all the branches are facing the middle, the middle of the parents. All the kids are looking at us. We have to show them an example of Torah. The Torah is exciting. The Torah is beautiful, just like Aharon. The Aharon didn't change. He gave them this enthusiasm. Let's kindle our kids with the enthusiasm of Torah and excitement to Torah all their lives. Have a great week, everybody.